What's going on everyone? How are you? I've gotten a million questions on framing in the past. I don't know how long. That's like a lot of the the spam questions I get. They get they immediately flood my IMs or my Instagram feed. They get buried. I'm just gonna do this video, hopefully the most detailed video, only talking about it. That way so there's nothing, there's no confusion. This is what I use, this is why I use it, and this is how I do it. Comparison in weights, I have inner pine, I have a redwood, okay, so I have right, these are all foot, and I have one sixteenth inch angle. Would have been pretty cool if I had one eighth inch angle to show you the difference between one eighth and one sixteenth, but I think this is enough to compare trusty, handy dandy, Berkeley thing. We can clearly see the weight, so we're going to go ahead and weigh the pine stuff first. Got the pine stuff on here. Five and six ounces of foot, and that's for a pine two by two. And that was the redwood stud. Three, four, three and four ounces. It's fluctu I mean, it fluctuated. That one was between five and six, so it's a little bit lighter. Um, depending, that's about because the stats show that redwood's almost half the density of pine. That's kind of pretty consistent with what I have. Honestly, in redwood and even in pine, especially, but specifically in redwood, you when you're going to shop for it, you have to sift through the pile to find the lightest studs. Because there'll be some studs that are significantly heavier than other studs, and you'll you'll immediately know what I'm talking about if you go to a store and find it and sift through it. Otherwise, you're not really doing yourself a service versus going for a pine. Redwood, you have to seal very, very well, or, because um, it's very porous. So if it is exposed to water and it's not sealed well, it'll just soak up water very quickly. Pine, one of the, obviously being heavier, is because it's such a much more solid grain, harder to cut through. And it does soak up water, but not not like redwood will. So you gotta be careful. Um, and, that, and I've heard that cedar's also really water resistant. I've never had cedar. Um, I'd love for somebody to send me like a one foot sample of cedar. I'd love to try an equivalent, okay? This is, I mean, I cut them all in one foot sections. So now we're gonna see what this weighs. And I'll explain to you right after I weigh this why I choose to use this and only this, only 116. Only one and two ounces, that's it for the foot. So that goes back to my other argument with, with uh, the 1 8 inch. If I had 1 8 inch, this would have been a really, really good interview because a 1 8 inch, I think, is much more comparable to redwood. And I, when people are asking me what what a wood frame is comparable to like an aluminum frame, I thought that redwood frames, by, when, I, when I finally produced the cores, they were very comparable in weight to a 1 8 inch core frame. Another big, a big reason why I don't use 1 8 inch is it's extremely hard to rivet and drill. Like it takes an obscene amount of time, like hours you will waste drilling through that crap and then riveting it. If you were, if you weld, if you have the gift and skill of welding, then 1 8 makes more sense because then you can get rid of the overlay, you can get rid of the odd crook. The other reason I love 1 16th is because you can overlay it on top of each other and it doesn't create a gross gap that completely throws off your hatch the way it sits and, and the wood will make it bow. Like the 1 16th on top of each other for whatever reason doesn't do it. It's skinny enough to where you don't notice the difference. The carpet around your hatches bunches through there to where you don't, you don't see it but you will notice it on thin frame where you have to put like one eighth flat bar to compensate for the overlay because it'll, it'll just annoy you. You saw Ryan do that on his boat build for fire and fishing. Thank you for coming back by the way, Ryan. It was, it was about time. I saw him like overlay, overlay, overlay all over his boat. And then I ended up having to do the same thing with the Valco. And even in some spots I had to do that. Really when I started using angle to core the, the Valco, I had to overlay. And then I will tell you, between the Valco OG and the Valco Ultralight, night and day in terms of how they acted on the water. The OG definitely was nice and uh, it was pretty steady. It was a little bit more stable than the than the Ultralight, obviously because the added weight. At the end of the day, adding more weight to your boat is not a safe practice to make it more stable. I think that's a terrible idea. Yeah, we accidentally did that. I mean, that was part of the learning curve for doing all this. Lower, it was significantly slower. It was much harder for two people to be in that boat and it plane on, on a 15 horse. And it was pretty comparable stats. I mean, it was the, you know, the OG had a 15 horse, the Ultralight had a 15 horse on it, 15 horse Merc. And when I took the Ultralight out on the water, I swear it was like there was no kid in it. It just, it just felt like a boat with stuff in it. It, it like, felt like a stock haul with stuff in it, like nothing. You couldn't even really tell the weight of the kit. Almost, you couldn't. I was surprised, I was blown away by how, how it felt on the water, unlike anything else I had done. 
beat Gen 3, beat all of them. It, um, it also played very well with my son and I, like we maxed out RPMs on that 15. And we couldn't, it didn't, it didn't struggle to get to RPMs, it just went right at 23, 24 mile an hour. And then Matt's boat, whenever he was on with his 12 foot yak killer with his jumping board, that's he would max out 23, 24 mile an hour. I mean, I'm obviously thinking that 15, he maxed out RPMs on that on that prop because of how light and how small his boat was. But um, we maxed out RPMs on the prop with the 14 foot boat. It was a significantly bigger boat than Matt's boat with a much lighter kit in it. So we're looking at all those things. So I have since switched only to 1 16th angle 1 16th by 1.5. Why do I like 1.5? Because it gives you a lip for like, so like your hatch can sit on it. And there's like a comfortable area for the hatch to sit on it. You can go one inch, and it'll be even lighter. Um, I have one inch in my Yak Killer because, because in, a, in a boat so small, it just matter. So like in, on a real small boat, I would go one inch angle. The only thing is you need under supports for this. This stuff will flex, like even at one foot, which is a pretty strong span, like link span for the, I mean for the product. You can see I can bend that. So that's where the weakness is. You do need a lot of under supports per span. Like I, I run one, I run under support for like for one foot span of it. Where if I had other stuff going, I could like maybe span three feet or so for the under support. So there's a little a few more under supports in there, and I generally use three fourth inch by one sixteenth tubing for the spanning because it does really good. And then and then tubing in those short sections, it's really unbendable. It doesn't bend like this. People keep asking me, Mike, get a welder. Why don't you, stop riveting? Stop riveting. Well, you know, if I was going to get if I was gonna keep doing one eighth inch frames, I would have got a welder, and I promise you that, because drilling and riveting a one eighth inch frame sucks. And then even what sucks even more than that, like putting side rails with one eighth inch uh, angle sucks even worse. Worst experience ever. But when you're doing a side rail, I have a video up here by the way of how you do the side rails. Once you slot and drill these to make independent brackets, you can bend it with your hand or bend it with a crescent wrench. It's it's fairly easy. Going back to why I rivet, as it doesn't make any sense to weld one sixteenth. Stops making sense. At one eighth inch aluminum, I, I could not I could not bend or turn or flex one eighth inch aluminum. It's the difference between one sixteenth and one eighth inches, which is only a sixteenth of an inch. It's like night and day how how strong one eighth inch is. And so really at that point in time, the rivets will break before the frame will break. And then it's also you would get rid of the overlay one sixteenth. The frame will bend. Obviously, the frame will fail before the rivets fail. That's reason one. So I don't think I don't think welding. It would definitely fail before the weld fails. It'll fail before the rivets fail. So it's not going to like, and it flexes a lot. And then the other thing is like rivets flex a little bit in the weld. When the weld cracks, that's it. If a rivet like kind of wears and flexes, you can replace the rivet very, very easily. I mean, but in the end of the day, the rivet flex. The rivets like straight aluminum. Straight aluminum rivets, not some some off flux core. The only thing you're losing by using rivets is it's not as cosmetically pleasing. It's arguably not as cosmetically pleasing, but I don't think it takes any less time to prep all the aluminum so you can absolutely weld it perfectly versus like drilling a few holes. It's way easier to drill through 1 16th and rivet through 1 16th. It's, it's like, it's cake. Josie from the 402, um, the guy, same guy who built Flair's boat and a longtime patron of mine actually did a very, very, we, him and I discussed how we would frame 1 8 because he bought a bunch of 1 8 on accident. And I said, well, this is how I think I would do it in an unrivetted platform, how it would be successful, and he did it. I'm waiting for him to give me the finished product so I can drop that video. I think that would be very, very helpful because I know a lot of people out there don't have access to 1 16th, and I, I'm just so glad to have worked with Josie. Framing becomes much less of a headache. I think aluminum framing just takes much, much longer than obviously wood framing. For those of you who have problems, there was a guy that hit me online about aluminum, but I get so many IMs that flux through here, and it, it flushed them out, and I could never find them again. I hate it. But uh, he was I, was, I was, I would love to work with an online vendor who can sell 1 16th aluminum to the general public, find me, because I have a lot of people hitting me up like, Mike, I can't find this stuff. Where it is, almost always is, is at a Lowe's or Home Depot. It's just ex extremely expensive there. Because I will say again, like I said in the beginning of the video, weight is everything in a tiny boat. When you're dealing with weight, with limited water displacement and limited horsepower limits, uh, you know, weight is everything in the boat. For you to stick a kit, like I have another project, you'll see it very soon. I'm working with another gentleman, b I wanna make that, I wanna make that thing blow away anything I've had out here because I actually have a decent amount of funding and everything to pull it off the right way, the time and the funding to do it. And I, I wanna make a full like kit in that boat that will be able to hold all the gear and two people 
and still be able to play on a 9.9 with like a 9.9 motor. I think I can do it with a composite deck and 1 16th inch framing, I think I can do it. So that'll be pretty cool. That's something that's coming up uh, very, very soon. Like within the next week, I just haven't, I haven't shown it to anybody. Uh, what you will see is Kusa board decks. I've been wanting to cover that stuff for a very, very long time and how to get it fairly cheap. So wait for all that, that's coming up. All right, I'll see you later guys, thank you.